beginning of my camping trip. I decided on a different area, the Nola Chucky River. I can night fish here. I got some red worms, some night crawlers. I got my one day fishing license for two days just in case. That was a local. He's already gone. That's the end of it right there. But in my video where I'm coming back from Bostic, that's where we almost stopped on top. But this is where I'll be fishing. I went by and got my cornmeal mix and it's the kind that requires no egg and milk. It's uh, Zatarain's too. Uh, I got to find a place to set up camp, my tarp. I should have brought my rubber boots and I could wade across, but I'll find a place somewhere around here I can set up my tarp, my tarp lean to. But anyway, this is the Nola Chucky, and the Appalachian Trail is just right up there. Can't see it though, we might make it up there later. But got about hour and a half of light, so I'm gonna get that uh, shelter set up first. Then we shall begin the fishing and camping. Alrighty, we're under the tarp. I'll show you what I brought. Some cooking oil in a peanut butter jar. Some salt and pepper in med bottles. And I got some of that, you don't need egg or milk. That Zatarain's uh, fish fry. And I got a bunch of these new, uh, Body armor makes them, but they're uh, uh, extra hydration, flash IV. So I got some of them, and Smokey Joe sent me these half gallon canteens with the covers, and I filled both of them up. Got my trout bag. I went ahead just in case and got me a two one-day fishing license just in case game warden comes up there's my little tackle box and my fishing rod we're fixing to go fishing so i got my mat already rolled out and cleared and got me a little wall built there in the roof i got a rock on the end that way it'll the water will drain off down on that end and I got my extra dry clothes, all long sleeve. And the CSX tracks are just right up uh, by the Appalachian Trail, a hundred yards from here. So I'll wear that if I gotta walk the tracks. Brought an extra gallon of water. I was gonna bring my uh, water filtration system but I accidentally cut a darn hole in it opening the bag got my hatchet and I had a friend send me that it's a shower you hang it up in a tree and it holds I think three gallons but it's black so the sun heats it up in like 45 minutes to 90 degrees and it's got a shower head on it you could take a shower in it but that's for cooking later. My skillet I brought. I couldn't find my cast iron one. And of course I brought my medicine bag and my flashlight and my winter hat. But let's go on out and take a look at the river. Yeah, it was raining pretty good. Uh, Try to keep some of this weight off this tarp. 
I don't like it sagging like that. But I'm in a really good place. And that's going to be a good, excellent fishing spot right there. Where the rapid stop and the fish going upstream can take a break. Real pretty view here. And the train bridge that we've just seen is just around the bend up there. That CSX. But anyway, you can walk out. And yeah, instead of rocks, a lot of people condemn me about this, but I take and cut a little hole that big and that water can drain out because it ain't going to make it over that lip where they fold it so the water will just drain out of that lip I mean out of that little hole but yeah it's real sandy where I'm at too so it'll be extra soft I had to move a lot of rocks you can tell at one time I mean, this is Appalachian bedrock right here. So this is like 380 million years old. You can see the direction the water used to in the river at one time run that way. You can tell it almost looks like glacier rock up in the Great Lakes, even on Long Island in New York, like in Central Park, you see rocks like this that are gouged out by glaciers. Woo, this is slick. I gotta be careful, but I'm coming out here to go fishing. That's about knee deep. Right there. But you can see little minnows. I got me some red worms and some grubs. Basically, they're both earthworms, but the red worms are just a little smaller good for those little bitty brass hooks the first fishing license i got is covers all species until midnight but the second one i got starts at midnight and lasts till tomorrow midnight but i only got it for trout so i gotta throw back anything that's not a trout but anyway I couldn't have picked a better place. Man, this is nice and quiet. And it's right by the train tracks too. So let me get my fishing tackle out. And throw a few casts and see if we can't catch some supper. Went ahead and stopped by a Mexican restaurant and got a couple of soft tacos just in case. Don't catch no fish. But let me get my fishing rod and reel out and bait the hook and get to fishing. I'm going to use my tripod though, fishing. Alright, got the hook on. It took me a while to see that swivel. But I used uh, a weight headed lure. You can also make. Uh, arming a hook you can also make lures out of them but I got some red worms and some regular grub uh, they're basically the same the red worms are smaller and the grubs the earthworms are larger let's see yeah these are Yeah, the red worms, and these are the, the grubs. I'll start out with the grubs. But anyway, let me get this all dressed out and decked up. I'm going to fish without a cork. 
Yeah, this, I can't promise you anything. This thing ain't just, rod and reel ain't been used in years. It's a South Bend rod, and it's a 1971 Abu Garcia Mitchell reel. There ain't nothing plastic about that. But let's get it out and cast out. Now again, I'm not promising nothing. I Already gotten hung up. Well, it might be a limb or something out there. There it goes. Now, let's see if I did any damage to the hook. Well, it broke, and it's getting dark, so I'll have to fix it tomorrow. Well, that's going to be one fish that gets a free worm and a hook. But yeah, look at that. A Metro Garcia, Abu Garcia. And South Bend Rod. Well, that fishing deal didn't go too good. I have to remember there's a log or a stick out there somewhere, so, and it's getting dark, so. I'm not going to be able to fix it until morning, and even then, I might not be able to with my eyes. I didn't bring my uh, magnifying glass. I should have, but, well, darn. Yeah, there's a bunch of water bugs on top of the water, skimming around. See them? Uh... I don't know what kind of, what, do you, what genus and species those uh, floating bugs are, but they got a really odd name for their genus and species name. So we'll set this expensive, rare fishing rod out of the way so it don't get sandy. And we'll have a look around. Uh, Right now, I'm gonna sleep over there against that wall. But let's go have a look. Uh, kind of give you an idea of where I'm at. Man, I wish I could just live out here. Free rent.
Yeah, I liked coming down here because you get Mother Nature's staircase. I'll show you what, what I mean here. See them roots? It's a natural staircase going up. Pretty neat, huh? And you got another, and then you're up top. Now the Appalachian Trail is just right up, probably 100 yards. I don't want to leave my camp unattended because I got some pretty expensive stuff. Really rare stuff too. They're supposed to have some kind of apple festival going on in Irwin today. That's probably where all the traffic was. But, yep, this is my favorite time of day when it starts getting dark and you got to start getting prepared. This is what time I always start getting my flashlight out. Uh, I go ahead and get rolled out. That way when it gets pitch dark, you're not looking around through your flashlight in the dark. That's the number one tip I try to give the new riders. Always make sure you get your flashlight out about 30 minutes before dark. You know, I was uh, telling Larry about and I've never told anybody this story, but uh, when I first started riding, I was still in California. It was that trip that I rode from Laramie to Stockton, that first trip I ever rode. Well, that first week, I was rolled out behind a, uh, like a mini storage unit, but it wasn't on their property. It was beyond their fence on the back side of one of the units. And it was like four in the morning and I could hear some giggling and some rummaging around and I, I smelt fuel, but it wasn't like gas. And I come out of that sleeping bag and yelled and these three kids run off. They were squirting me, my sleeping bag, with lighter fluid, and they was going to set me on fire. And that's, not, and I'm not the only one that's ever told that story. Uh, I've heard about that happening several times. I even read a story where, I don't remember it was Houston or somewhere around Houston, these Boy Scouts, probably 8 to 10 to 12-year-old Boy Scouts, we're all in their sleeping bag, and these guys, these kids went in there, these teenagers that belonged to some gang, went in there and squirted them all down, And but they lit them on fire, and a lot of those kids got third and third degree burns. And I thought, man, that a person like that don't deserve to live on this earth. I don't even know why they breathe our own air. Our air People like that breathing my air that sets a poor kid on fire that's out having fun that thinks it's his funnest time in his life and he ends up in a burn unit. Uh-uh. I ain't got no time for people like that. And to try to burn me in my sleeping bag, I ended up just pitching. I tried washing that sleeping bag a couple of times, but you know that lighter fluid just doesn't come out you can't ever get rid of the smell well there's the beginning of the Appalachian foothills there is a road over there but I don't see it anywhere well it's time to start gathering some wood and make a fire pit there's a bridge I forget what road that is but if you walk across, go up about a half mile, take a right, go down about a mile and a half, there's a Shell or a Roadrunner gas station. 
So if I run out of water or or anything or I can't catch any fish to eat, I'll just go down there and get me something to eat. I got two soft tacos uh, just in case something like ha that just happened happened. But the thing is that line on that reel is probably from 1971 also. But if you take if you take your rod and reel to Academy or Bass Pro and you order a new fishing line, they'll put it on for you for free. And since my eyes are so bad, I should have done that. I should have went in yesterday to Academy and had them put some 15 or 12 pound test line on for me. Uh, that way it'd be wrapped right. It wouldn't be weather rotted and dry rotted. Uh, I'm glad I didn't use that brass hook. Those brass hooks are expensive, but they don't rust. They don't uh, tarnish. They don't corrode. They stay sharp as can be. They're more expensive than them uh, steel hooks. Uh, I don't. I don't use anything cheap. Believe me. See, I'm already lost. That's how good I'm hid. And I'm also focused up too far. you probably seen my nostrils in that last one. <laughs> but anyway, I hope it wasn't that way when I was telling that story about them Boy Scouts down in Texas. Well, you got to hear it anyway. That's all that counts. I wish I didn't have to tell a story like that. I wish humankind was better than that, you know. But I've had better nice stories than bad, so let's just tell nice stories. You know, during my travels, especially when I first started traveling, just when I thought, you know, it can't get any worse, I'm broke, I don't have a cent. Not even one penny to my name. How am I going to get something to eat? There ain't a church in this town for miles. Everybody in town is just acting weird. They don't look friendly. Well, I tell you what. It don't matter where you are, what situation is. Somebody's always a miracle happens. You'll find $50 laying in the weeds or somebody will just walk up and say, God told me to give you this. And speaking of that, I want to thank everyone who's bought some merchandise from me because every time you buy some merchandise, that helps me out immensely. It pays my bills. It pays the rent. <coughs> And uh, while I'm still going through all this medical stuff. But anyway, I just want to thank you guys that uh, have bought my merchandise. And which reminds me, Jerry, the manager of the website that uh, does all the hard work, he, he wanted me to let everyone know that for two weeks, starting now, the colored shoestring shirts like I'm wearing and I believe the hobo shadow shirts in all colors and sizes for two weeks are up for sale right now just to let y'all know uh, let me get around this real slow and see if I can get my sleeping bag and everything out before it gets dark well, to get, in case you started late, I was going to give another quick look. I like it low. That way uh, I get to hear that rain pitter-patter. I put a wall on that side, and I use them. Well, them clips come in handy. They're about 6 or $8 each. But these smaller ones are like 6 But you can get the really small ones like, let me show you. These at Walmart for like a buck. These little small ones here. You can get 
but they sure help. See, it's already sagging, so I'm gonna have to put a a string underneath it to raise it up in the middle, or just start on that end and push this way and get some of that water off. But once it dry, it ain't, it ain't supposed to rain much, but. It's sandy and soft under here. I got my, uh, let me find my light. That way, uh, I can show you my bedroll. Yeah, that's just my mat there. And I brought my CS6 jacket in case I want to walk the track. My fish fry and my fishing pole, my bucket, but yeah, pretty nice little right by the river, look at all that, all the rapids out there on the river, but anyway, yeah, that rain's starting to come again, but it's just light. It ain't going to come up to this level where I'm at. It may go up a half inch, but that's all. It started raining again, so... It's the last of it. There's just one more line, and that cold front moves through. Uh-oh, I, I tagged the tree. No, nah, that's one of my shirts just happens to be the same color as the trunk I got that fishing rod put to good use it makes a arch on the tarp to kind of shed the water off so it's serving a good purpose yeah check out these canteens you ever seen a two liter canteen this big Smokey Joe my friend sent me these Two of them, they hold two liters each. A whole gallon for both of them. And then a bucket. And I got a couple of hoses in the tarp. I did take this wall tarp and put up top over the top of it. And then I took my tarp that goes under my mat right here and put over the top and it proved to be just too much weight just in tarp alone so yeah I got my axe over there chopped in the wood where I can grab it real quick if I need it and my bear spray too yeah and I got the uh, safety clip in it this time <laughs> so I don't spray myself again but anyway uh, that's it for now I'm gonna go ahead and sign out and tomorrow we'll go to the Appalachian Trail and look around and we'll walk the rail down to the bridge and look around and uh, go from there and I'll I'll thread that line on there again through the eyes on that rod and hopefully that that line won't break again it's probably 10 or 12 or 15 pound test line but it's if it's a line it come with it's 53 years old so no wonder it broke now, if I go to Academy or Bass Pro and buy their spider, I, I want to get that spider line. They'll, they'll reel it on there for you for free. That way it's done right. And that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, as soon as it quits raining in about 20 minutes, that'll be the end of it. I already feel the colder air. It's about 8 or 10 degrees cooler already. You can already see my breath. So I will talk to you guys in the morning.
and I hope you guys have a good night. All right, it quit raining, and there's my feet in my sleeping bag, and just gonna tell everybody good night. Uh, hear that river, the Nola Chucky River. Oh, I can barely hear it. I can imagine what it sounds like if I had full hearing. You guys have a good night. I know I am. I'll see you in the morning. And we'll go fishing and catch some breakfast, hopefully. Hopefully that shirt will dry up by morning. All right. Good night, everyone. Well, it's morning now. I should have wore my coat. Yeah, I had a nice surprise. My friend Gib came down and scared the crap out of me. He snuck up on me. Over there, came on the side of my shelter there and beat on it with a stick. He started making these weird noises and I thought it was a big old possum or raccoon at first. And then I thought, oh God, it's a crazy local. It's a crazy hillbilly beating on my uh, tent. Where's my nine millimeter? Then he goes, hey, shoestring. I went, oh man, you're just fixing to get shot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I should have wore my coat. No, I wouldn't have shot, shot him. He already got my fishing pole out there fishing. Yeah, I got hung up on a log to your right yesterday and it broke that old line. You using a floater? Okay, I think I see it. We always called them corks or bobbers. I like them real original corks. I'm gonna finish getting rolled up. Get this tore down. Well, there's my house for last night. It finally all dried out. It served me good. See, that's another thing I, I should have thought of. Uh, that cold front coming through. And I did. I did right. The north is that way. And that north wind was blocked by that, that wall over there I got. And that warm sun fixing to come over here. But you don't see the sun like you do in because you're in the mountains. It's a good 11 o'clock before the sun gets over that mountain. All right, I gotta get this all tore down and put away. All right, now I'm gonna tear it down real time. Talking to myself over here. Get back in that bear tree. Yeah, all 
start giving my little flashlight. I knew I should have wore that Carhartt coat. brought that summer bag too. I should have brought that winter bag. got so dry boy when you banged on the side of that tarp with that stick I thought you were some crazy local from the campground up there but first I thought it was a big giant possum at first I had that on video. show up in the weirdest place. Yep. Having these clips, these clips are your best friend. It's in my daggum bucket. Anyway, 
Now we'll see if my buddy Gib catches anything out there while I finish putting the rest of this stuff away. I think I may have put my knife in my... Yeah, there's my flashlight. Now I gotta find my knife. And there it is. What's that? There's your worms in your pole. No bites? I, I got a couple of them out there. I saw the fiber go chum real down. Oh, you think it's trout then? Could be. Yeah, they bite pretty fast and it's hard. Cold. You're not gonna get fish to move. Well they're a cold water fish, you may have done trout. Yeah, that air got cold and they're probably way out in deep water well, now. It got wet. We got wet and cold. Went yeah. under the bridge. Yeah. They're going to dry off somewhere. Went under the bridge. Well, last night down in that pool, these minnows were right here looking for protection from predators. I should have recorded them, but it was man, it was darker than I've ever seen dark in my and since I was a kid. Yeah, that's a good, another good hose up there at that railroad bridge. There's a big pool, tidal pool that swirls. All right, now this is after. You can't even tell I was here. Got the trash right there to take away. There's a fishing rod and the gear. It all went down into that backpack. And here's Gibbs. And one thing, yeah, Gibbs having a seizure standing up. No, he's having his moment. <laughs> he, he he is crazy enough to jump in there buck naked. I was gonna show you the new hobo shadow shirt. Get them while they last. I love it. It's that good beefy tea. They're worth the money. I tell you that. But yeah, Gibb got a couple of bites, a couple of strikes. So they're biting. It's just that water, that air turned cold last night, and they're just seeking warmer, deeper water. It's, but with all that mixing, that that water should be cooling off equally. I'm gonna see if I can't pan in on that rock he was talking about. Yeah, I dangle my legs off the edge too, but there's no way I could do like you said, smoke a joint and then do it. Because I'm already a little tipsy. That's why I don't smoke this stuff. I feel like a robot. That's damn robot, man. Oh, yeah. I call it a three second lapse. I, I know what I'm doing for three seconds and then it takes me three seconds to remember what I'm doing and then it goes, every time I smoke weed, it, it happens to me. I hate it. I probably never will smoke it again. I, I It's like a, I, I'm like a robot. And somebody said, oh, you need to try Indica or the other one. That, and, uh-uh. I went to Denver down to that 23 Street Mall and uh-uh. No matter what kind of pot it is, uh, it, it does me bad. Well, there's the Nola Chucky Doll River. Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. Chucky did it, Mama. There's some of them tulip poplars biggest ever I like how the sunshine goes through the leaves yeah you can see this parasitic vine growing up that's one heck of a 
parasitic vine, it just feeds off the nutrients of the tree till it study. chokes it out. But that's what it is. It's got these little dingleberries on it. That's that vine. If anybody can name it, look it up. It's got a weird name I can't pronounce. It's got a weird genus and species name to it. But yeah, it's some kind of choker vine, and it's growing off a branch, too, out of that root, out of that feeder. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, it's got these little berries on it. Well, you could get out on that rock and just fish all day. But we're fixing to go up on the railroad tracks. You can hear Gibb singing. All right. Oh shit, I almost got hit by a car again. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to see. This, oh, I gotta turn the camera off to get up. Alright, that's looking towards Irwin. And... Here's the bridge we're going to. Well, there ain't no footing, so if a train come, it's gonna be like on Stand By Me movie. Train! Yeah, I guess you could crawl over along the side, and yeah, you could get down there, and and I should have brought my darn marker. You know, on that trip, my last trip video from Bostick, we nearly stopped on this bridge. You might remember it. We were going like one mile an hour through here. Reminds me of Star Wars. Dri flying through that trench of the Death Star. Well, I thought that airplane was a train. There he is. I came up that side. <laughs> I climbed up the rock. If a train came, we'd have to jump down on that edge. I can't see what that says. I, I love somebody. Ah, I forgot my darn markers. Could have tagged that bridge. You can tell these are all new when the, when the sun gets real hot, that creosote melts. And when it's hot, like 90 degrees or hotter, and you step in that, I'll tell you what, you might as well throw them boots away. That stuff, you ain't getting it off. Well, before a train comes, let me zoom in to the... That sun's presenting a problem. It's kind of got a glare in the... Somebody played tic-tac-toe. Why don't, why don't they call it tic-tac-finger? What does the toe mean? Tic-tac-toe. Or what is tic? And tack and toe me. Toe ho you. <laughs> or hang hangman was uh, me and Ken's favorite. Oh, you brought one. This will stay for about a year, so I'll do it underneath the shelter of that. Uh, watch I fall through that hole. Right down in the Noah Chucky. Oh, spread out. That'll be less dangerous. 
That's where train comes. There's no way no one can copy this, even if they looked at it. It's like a signature. There's always going to be something wrong with it if somebody tries to imitate it. It's a little crooked because my eyes are real bad this morning. And I go to the E. And back down and across. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. And since I'm going that way, we'll put the arrow that way. If I'm going the other way, I put it that way. So we'll just put the, what's today, the eighth? I'm just gonna guess the date. I can't believe I'm putting 24 on there already. Woo! Now let me. Drop my camera in the river. It'd be bad. God, it would be bad. <laughs> there you go. This thing's been used before. They moved it. See the track? Yeah, they had a derail. What them wheels uh, run on that? Two sides over there. Yeah, it's but supposed they, to help when a derail too. Usually they put a center rail in there. It's been notched two times. Like one. Over here. Yeah, that's where a train come off the track. But and look at this side too, you see. Where it's yeah, that's the other centered, wheel. Yeah. Centered the rail. The, the it looked like two, just two ax, right two axles came off. Right here and right there. That so you side. can barely see the shoestring. Sure yeah, see, see, that's. I'm just showing everybody on video where it, or they had a derail. Short jump. The flange of the wheel here. And then you can see where it come off over there and, and rolled along the wood. Must have been an empty car or it would have left a deeper yeah. trench than that. It's leaned harder on that side. This side's leaned harder than that one. Yeah. yeah. It could have been leaning too. Yeah. Well, the axles were off too to leave that big of a gap like that. I wonder how far they, before they knew it. Sometimes they go miles before that hose comes apart. Swim across the dang track. All the tracks. The stop track there about there. Right uh, where it gets through the curve, it stops. Yeah, now that it's shady, I might be able to zoom all the way down and see the end. Oh, it curves, huh? Oh, we doggy. Train! All right. Well, I, I was gonna ask. I didn't know if you wanted to or not. You can see over. It. See that wall's lower down there. We can see over it to curve. See, I was gonna get up there and walk. I, no way to get up there. No, nah, it ain't worth risking yourself to get up there. <laughs> Do a plop down in the water. I believe it'd break your damn leg. Would you? What, what's, you. what's the weirdest story you've ever heard about? On this river in this area. This one? Mm -hmm. Or scary a story? Mine, a friend of mine, uh, him and his girlfriend, and the, the girlfriend's little boy, probably maybe 15 years ago or maybe better. They were down there on the Melichecki River. The little boy got in the water and was swimming, and he got out a little too far and he couldn't swim. And he got caught in the current and the undertow got him and he started pulling him. So uh, Jim Bob jumped in, go save the little boy and both of them wound up drowning. Oh man. And the little boy and him trying to save the little boy. 
How old was he? He wasn't very old. <laughs> Jim Bob was in his 20s. Yeah, the river that shallow, he must, he must have been four or five. The boy wasn't very old either. Golly. And, uh, yeah, oh, the sad. one that tried to rescue him? Copus, Jim Bob Copus. That's sad to, have to lose two lives like yeah. that. That's like a drunk driver. You have the person killed in the wreck, and then the guy that does the at fault ends up going for life. Yeah, the you, the dude that's drunk and has the wreck usually don't get hurt. And kill yeah, else, like the know? guy that hit Colby. Yeah, he's already out of jail. That car wreck you showed me. Yeah. Man, that's a bad. Yeah, car. that happened to my friend in Canada. Alaska. He was Man. driving back from Kentucky to Alaska. Yeah. Eric Wade. I'll give him a shout out. That's him and that. It's a wonder he survived uh, a drunk uh, First Nation mm -hmm. person ran over him head on. But he was way out in the middle of nowhere on the Alcan. Somebody been across there's footprints. Hey, there's a a deer print. A deer human. Going and coming. That's a little footprint. That's one, a woman. One, one coming. No, it's a big shoe. It's just halfway across. You see what I'm I like them shoes you got. I got to like get me. Them. They look lighter as can be. They are. You can get them down there at the Walmart. Are them Skechers? Yeah, $19 a pair. Man, I got to get cause these ones. I, I got it at the house. What size do you wear? I wear 13. You do? Yeah. That's what I wear. I thought you wore like an eight. Shit, I've never no. seen a person <laughs> your height with such a huge foot. You know what that means, huh? Like on that movie Roxanne with Steve Martin. You know what they say about a man's nose. And that old lady's like, uh, yeah, it means the, oh, oh, she realized it. Like and they're that all. Joe Carl Childers said. One of them said it was cold, the other said it was deep. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, I'll be, I'll be dog. I'll be dog. <laughs> he actually cut a joke. Get it. <laughs> yeah. You get it. I like when he gives him that key to that garage, he just puts it in his top pocket. I don't put anything in my top pocket. I'll end up bending over and losing that. Yep. There's a guy on YouTube that goes through the drive throughs and plays in voices. Yep. No one ever gets it, though, these younger generation. They you got any French fried taters in there for sale? They ain't got a sense of freaking humor. <laughs> How much you want for them? There we go. <laughs> then he goes to that Starbucks and says, uh, yeah, you, you got a cappuccino? Man, yeah, down. we sell cappuccinos. You it got coffee down. in it. A coffee kind of makes me nervous. Oh, you can on, see man. over, huh? Yeah, you're going for life. Just be careful. Woo! Right Almost tripped yeah. on that boat. That's a big hole. <laughs> God, I'd wreck my God. sack or one. Be fractured for oh, that's a field out there. Ain't it? A garden or something. Hey, I thought somebody's riding on here. That's a lot of railroad riding. You know, all over this area, I see them buying. What are them vines? Kind of. Huh? Kudzu vines. What is it? Kudzu. Oh, okay. Cause man, they grow to the top of the tree. It's an it's a uh, invasive species that come from Asia. It's kudzu. God, man, it's, it's gotta I mean, kill the tree eventually. I believe the only thing that'll eat it's a damn uh, groundhog. I don't think anything else mm -hmm. even likes it. I'll try to zoom in up there. Yeah, you'll have to spell the name of that. That's it. That way the viewers will know. Well, they the viewers live around here. They all know what it is. Boy, I'm going to end up really making a good video when I go falling through this. Some people call it Tennessee toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Railroad tie. Because my butthole would land right on that if I did the split. I'd get a massive splinter and a nice boil. These must be test bolts of some sort, kind of like those date nails. You can 
tell, hey, that's one heck of a carpenter bee. No, that, that's just another. See, you can see where that train's been going around the corner and shelling. See how it's wearing on the inside more than the outside? And there's that oil from that track oiler. That oil kind of helps cut down on that shelling, but it's lower on this point than it is that. And a long time ago, what they used to do is just flip the rail around. They'd take the whole thing and put this side on that side. And just get another even wear on that other side of the rail. Train! I'm going to flip the camera around. Because I don't think I got that whole shirt in the... First video, I think shoestring is just the top. But yeah, for two weeks, all the color shirts are on sale for a uh, two weeks straight special. Uh, the shoestring shirts and the shadow shirts are any color you want. 24 different colors, all sizes, for two weeks special. He ordered a certain amount and he thinks he's going to run out by then. That's why it's just going for two weeks. I'm going to walk a little further and then it all kind of looks the same. Somebody's wearing tennis shoes up here too. Them old boat shoes. Them ones that are, God, them are all close together. I walk about three or four apart here. Oh, we can walk out on that, huh? See, it's a, uh, it's spelt uh, right here. How you spell it? It's K U D Z U Kedzu, K U D Z U. And Kudzu, it's, man. Yeah, Kudzu. It's called a Japanese arrow root or Chinese arrow root, and it's an invasive weed, invasive species. Well, up in the mountains, you remember in that video, you see it everywhere. Kudzu, the invasive vine. That. That, that what? Kudzu looks like innocent enough. It yet. not only starves out the nutrients, it starves the light out. Yeah, the invasive plant easily overtakes trees, abandoned homes, and telephones. Kudzu, homes. I've heard of that. I thought I thought it was a delicacy or something. You can eat it. I mean, it's edible. But I don't know. I've never eaten it, and I don't want to. Yeah, I was reading in these edible books, you can almost eat anything on earth. Oh, uh, Jerry said when we go to Africa in March that uh, he's going to let me try some camel meat. I'll try it. I'll eat camel. I'll eat donkey. No, I ain't eating no dog. Now, I've been hungry enough in Arkansas once. I would have ate a dog or a cat or if somebody's hand would have got chopped off, I would have stuck it on a grill and fried it up. Where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> I thought you fell through or something. I I'm fell the, through, God. I'm out here on the back porch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get a good layout camp here. Yeah, get out here and the train comes. <laughs> Golly, that's nice. Oh, look at all the... Kudzu. <laughs> hey, there's that kudzu. Look at the infrastructure. Kansas City is the worst as far as your bridge is crumbling away. Look at that. Oh, written on with a rock. 1988. <laughs> That's 1890, I doubt that. <laughs> I think it's what it says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy. S.G. Ferguson, 1993. <laughs> I wonder if how many of these are dead. Brenda Cooper. Ding dong. Don. Oh, Don. Here's a 1978. 78. Lady Falcon. Lady Falcon. Lady Falcon. These are probably just local people, huh? Yeah. Oh, Boy, well, that would be a. 
or a, a leg buster. Well, I can lean really far. I would. <laughs> no. I'm just reaching out. That's my favorite tree in the world. Sycamore. They're the best climbing trees on earth. See them dingleberries? I used to shoot them. See them balls on it? Oh, yeah, you can eat them? No, you shoot them. Oh, just chill on them? Before they turn into... Well, anyway, when they turn brown or just like that, now they fly everywhere. Boom. Yeah, we used to put, pull them apart and let them... You used to shoot them with a slingshot and a marble. Oh, that's a good idea. And they bust open. Yeah, we shoot at them all. I never thought of that. I'm gonna get me a slingshot and a bunch of them balls and. Get a bag of marbles. Oh, marbles work the best. Or ball bearings. And up north they got that iron ore pellet. Boy, them things are good to use. See all these markings right here, Mark. That's railroad markings. Markings, Mark. Markings, Mark. Where it? All of these circles and shit. That's yeah, I think railroad. That, railroad. Yeah, there were numbers like for the spacing of the tire measurements. For the railroad, I've been marking them what boats are loose and it, it yeah, the boats and what work needs to be done. The thirty-fourth tire, uh, yeah, thirty-one like feet from something. See, though, there's the span it's telling you about. It's telling you the span and everything right here. Span number six. One boat and 238 and two on 236. Oh, they got them fixed, so they marked through them probably. They know what they are. <laughs> Boy, they got grass and everything growing. Boy, you could hide anything up under here. You'd camp out under there, couldn't you? God, that's coming all apart. <laughs> that metal strut. Yeah, there's a bunch of good iron down there. There's a high, there's them, uh, them, uh, what do you call them? Them spikes and everything. Yeah, there's a thousand of them down here. Yeah, there's spikes and plates. And yeah. That's that's terrible there. how bad the infrastructure is. Look that and we meet up. Yeah. All kinds of junk. <laughs> no wonder they had a derail. <laughs> I don't really particularly care for them kind of rail anchors. If I could get one of them spikes, I'd reach them and grab it, but I can't reach it an arm anymore. Now I gotta turn the camera off in order to get my old butt up here. Alright, check out how that's worn unevenly. See that side? That flange on the inner wall of that axle rubs that on that corner. Because it's going to the right. The rail. And that oil, there's a track oiler somewhere around here that puts a, a bead of oil on every axle and it, and it spans out and it helps reduce that friction. And that squealing and that shelling's not as bad. Otherwise, that whole rail would be worn in half. What you see? God, look at them all sticking up. Man, the railroad needs to know about that. Look at that. It might trip the train. <laughs> I mean, they're all sticking up, like coming that. out. Might trip the train over. <laughs> Golly. Make the train stumble. You can pull them out by hand. Probably. Yep. I ain't going to do it. It's going to have all the... Probably kick them back down, but they're gonna wiggle back out. They'll work their way back out. Too. God, look at that. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous, he said. <laughs> yeah, they'll blame me for the next derail. Yeah. Stumbling the train. I can't believe that. That's a. All right, goodbye, Nola Chucky. Yeah, Gibbs seen this, a Colorado Rambler. That is a rail rider there. Almost looks like Bozo Texino, but not quite. It's got music notes from treble clefs up top. Not treble clefs, but clefs. It's almost like he tried to imitate the Beaumont Rambler. Uh-oh, I hear...
Oh God, it scared me. Look at the track right there. Do you see the track below the B and Rambler? Yeah, that's that's why I knew it was a rail rider. Too, the crossing too. He's got that crossing there on there with the numbers in it. Yeah, that was uh, 05 of 22? Yep, 05 of 22. Look at these railroad ties. You got a real skinny one. Check this one out while you're And a real fat one. Another track rider. See the track? It might be the same guy. It's the same the paint. The Rambler with the R and the yeah. track. The 22. And he's got the music note up there, too. I kind of like that. That was easier to draw. C A X X. Clam. C A M. Is that C A M Cam? Creek. Creek. Crack. Crack. Creakle. Creaker. Creaker squad. Oh. Geek squad. My dad never paid child support. <laughs> How far do I got to get? I'm going to end up dying because some guy's dad didn't take child support. Oh, I wouldn't fall that far, but far enough to end up back in the hospital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Scared me. Long what? Long coats. As long as it didn't say long, dong, silver. Cracked flange. See a railroad worker wrote. Yeah, that derail went all the way down to here. They probably didn't know about it for miles. It looks like it started right at the end of the bridge. But it had to have been an empty car because them gouges ain't that deep. You ought to see them when they're full. Man, it takes out a good two inches of that tie. Hey, they using bolts instead of nails here. I guess some machines will put them in. There's a nail and a bolt. Oh, here's your rambler too. He got the back of the sign. <laughs> Probably says no trespassing. You got the back and the pink in there? The pink. Yep, CSX. Oh, we weren't supposed to be on the bridge. Oh, I wouldn't have gone on there if I'd known that. Hey, there's that Rambler guy again. R with the tracks. He must have walked a long way. <laughs> and there's mile marker 10. Is it? That's how far it is. 14 until uh, the Irwin yard. Well, you know how they had to blast through all that rock like that? That solid bedrock. Can you imagine back in the 1860s having to... Look, that shows you how life will take over anywhere. Boy, this is a 380 million years old. Is that train? Hey, train. I hear a train. Which way is it coming from? Like All right, we'll get it. Use that for toilet paper. Use it for bandage. Anything wrapping. Huh. Yeah, it is velvet. I've seen it all over the U.S. So it, it's good for burns, too, huh? It's good for everything. Medicine. Going right out of the rock. Hey, there's one of them uh, hanging, what you call it? I might try to take that home. What's it, a hanging pussy willow? Yeah, because it'll grow anywhere. There's some uh, 
gonna get her trained. He's already. Now here comes the train right now. Get the oh, train. she's a kayaker. Get the train. Here he comes. He's flashing. This well, he should be coming. I thought I seen the light. Boy, he's having a good time. Yeah. All right, here's a man. Coal train. Gonna come straight for us. There's some yellow ones. That's that mullen. Mullen. Yeah, I like how it's got that furry leaves on it. Yeah, I'm gonna find out what these are. They came out by the roots and they're so resilient, they'll grow anywhere. And I got a pot to plant them in. Ready to go, actually. Now here's two more mullen plants. I'll just keep the roots wet. Keep right here. Boy, I hate these things. There's a mullen, and right up there's another mullen plant. Boy, I see a bunch of ragweed. Yeah, I see it now. Mullen. Well, here's the artesian well. When we was in Alaska, these were everywhere, but they were secret. You could tell. Look at all that iron. Oh, God, it tastes like Arkansas water. That Arkansas water was so bad, you couldn't even wash your dishes without them turning brown. It's full of iron. You get your daily allowance of iron. You know what it smells like? You ever smell fresh blood? Yeah, iron? it does smell like blood. blood. I your blood's full of iron. Yeah, That's what makes sense. Blood. Makes sense? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, blood. it's just missed the stickiness. I like guess blood. that pipe goes on out to the... It smells like blood. It does, like you cut your finger or something. Look at all that iron. This is a, this is a spring. They built this thing up around the Oh, God! I wouldn't have drank if I'd have seen that. Well, it's okay. This is the same thing. It's got all that iron. I mean, it's got floating, looks like iron, diarrhea. Iron. <laughs> this is coming out of them mountain spring. This is iron. Well, they got a lot of iron in the, in the rock. You mean that rock I picked up that one? I said you could really stop in the mountain. Yeah. Did you see the iron inside that? I'll say it like my little nephew when he was four is called these smush moons. He called scuba divers scuba gobbers. But they, yeah, they're full of iron, too. These are called turkey tails right here. Called what? Turkey tails. Look at the turkey tails. Oh, they do look like turkey tails. I'll be dog. It's some kind of lichen or shelf mode. Turkey tail. It, God darn, that does look just like a turkey tail. 
It's growing on top too. There's some more of them. I dare you to eat one of these. These are edible. These are a type of mushroom. Turkey kills. Yeah, ain't that neat? That's pretty. I ought to keep that. Turkey tail, real turkey tails are edible too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I don't know what you the other get ones. much meat. I don't know what the other ones are called. Yeah, they so might be poison. Kind of they're, they're What's the bottom look like? They're an edible mushroom too, yeah. You probably, I don't know. I wouldn't try it. That always freaks me out. I, too. I, I, uh, too. I don't mess with them. Gives me the chills. But these are pretty. I like the color. Yeah. Right here. Turkey tail shelf mode. Let me show you a difference. The two different different colors in it. In the one right there. See? They're pretty. Huh. Anything else? <laughs> That's, see right That's some flowers and rhododendron, isn't it? Yeah. Here's the moss. The moss on the lot. Yeah, up in Alaska. The whole ground is covered with that, and it makes the best bedding. There's a little bitty mushroom. I ain't never seen nothing like this. Same thing. It's just a... Oh, is it? See, right here, it's the same thing. Right here's more of them right there above it. That's the same thing. It just ain't flipped up yet. It's a nice orange color. Probably from that iron. There's some leaves off the hickory tree, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yes, getting that time of year. Yeah, all, all, all they stuff. marked that twig for some reason. Yeah, boundary or... Got an orange tag on it. Yeah, I think that's rhododendron. I'm not sure, but somebody will put in the comments. Got laurels and rhododendron. And, uh... If anybody can name what this tree is, wow. And we're umbrella. Oh, it's an umbrella tree. No, I don't know what. This thing is huge leaves. I'm not, for, I'm not for sure what these are. And that's a complete different... No, that's the same thing, ain't it? Yeah, I know. You know them big... It's got them big old flowers on them. What are they called? Them big old huge flowers. Uh, magnolia? That's what it looks like to me, but it's not a magnolia. Uh-uh. They got shiny leaves. And them big white flowers. They grow all over Louisiana. Arkansas. Look at that big old leaf. Oh, yeah, leave in the comments if you know what kind of species and genus this is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be an umbrella magnolia. Let's see if it's got that little tit on the end. Yeah, that might be an umbrella magnolia. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know of a way to look it up. They ought to have an app that has different leaves and stuff and you can look stuff up. Well, the fishing trip didn't go quite as I planned. I planned on uh, fishing a lot longer and making that the main thing of the video, but the line broke. I should have had it changed. I should have known better than to take 52 year old fishing line out there but I figured somebody would have changed it by then, but uh, Gibbs stopped by this morning, my friend, and banged on the side of my shelter with a stick and scared me to death. My God. He, he snuck up and started making noises at first, and I thought it was a small mammal. And then he started growling, and I, I knew it wasn't a bear. He was trying to pretend to be a bear. I still didn't know who it was, so I grabbed that bear spray and my my weapon. But by then, he beat on the side of that tarp of the wall with a stick. And by then, he stuck his head around and just started laughing, and then I started laughing. I said, dude, you were fixing to get bear sprayed and shot at the same time. And he about died laughing. So, he... he Went out and fished a little. He got a couple of strikes, but uh, I ended up restringing that uh, fishing pole, but it ended up breaking again. So it's the line. I'm going to get it re redone at Academy. They sell that P 
pea line or I think it's called and uh, that other really strong stuff so I'm gonna get that put on my fishing reel and then do it sorry the video ended that way without a fish fry I really am I really wanted to cook some fish up man that would have been nice but y'all got to see a lot of stuff. I want to show you guys something, a tip. It's called Rit Dye. It's spelled capital R, capital I, capital T. Rit. And you can find it over in the sewing section, like where the material is at Walmart or most any store. You can order it on Amazon. But, uh, I always do black. And, uh... When your stuff starts fading due to UV rays or just being washed too much or you accidentally bleach something, well, take a look at this. I used four bottles of it. You're only supposed to use one, but the last, uh, last time I used just one bottle, it didn't, it, it wasn't that concentrated. So what I do, I, if you add salt, add you about a half pound of salt per wash load, per four bottles of RIT. And uh, make sure it's on hot water as you can get it. You let it agitate enough to get mixed up, and then you stop it, and you let them soak. And you let them, you keep doing this, so like every 30 minutes, you let it agitate for about... 30 seconds, 45 seconds, then you stop it and let it soak. And of course, you're going to have to come back and reset the timer back. That way it don't go to spin. But keep doing that all day long. And those brown Carhartt pants I have, they're in here. So we'll get to see how they come out. I'll show you uh, how they came out in the next video. Uh... Y'all know of those brown pants I wear all the time, them cart pants. Well, they're going to be black, I guarantee you that. And that shirt Loretta sent me, that had that train on it, I accidentally put a little too much bleach and it went from black to brown. So now it's going to go back black. And I accidentally put a little too much bleach on my blue towels and they turned pink. I'm like, uh-uh, this, this, this white boy ain't gonna dry off on no pink towel. I, I, I don't want anything pink. So there, that towel's in there. So that towel will go from pink to black. And I put some shirts in there that were faded up top from UV rays. So I'll show you the after pictures. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And again, uh... For two weeks, the colored shirts are on sale and a bunch of more merchandise. And every purchase you make really honestly does help me out a lot. And I do appreciate it. Uh, I can't wait to see how black these came out. It'll look like I got brand new pants and shirts when it comes out. All right. You're fixing to see the after shot. Of course, it'll be eight hours from now for me. But I'm going to push stop on the camera and then it'll immediately be eight hours later on your video. All right. Look what that writ dye did. This was Carhartt Brown Tan. Now it's black. That was Carhartt Tan. The light tan. That writ dye turned it black. Looks a lot nicer now. And those brown Carhartts I was wearing in the la in the earlier in the video, they're black now. Look brand spanking new. And that shirt was really faded bad from the UV rays on the shoulders and being washed so much. But look that they look brand. Spanking new now, except for the ends, you can tell, you know, because they're kind of scraggly. And the towels that were pink are now gray and dark gray. And this was really bad faded. I got it back to life. 
It almost looks brand new except for the the railroad crossing. You can kind of see it worn. And all my caps came out really nice. Some of them still retained the green or the gray, but they are a lot darker. Now, some material just doesn't absorb that red dye. But, um, yeah, you can see they look a lot nicer now. My cap collection. And my shoestring shirt. This was also in my video earlier on that tree trunk last night. Remember, it was a uh, Carhartt tan. Now, look at it. It's almost like a, a forest green, but darker than that. So this is the shirt that I set against that tree last night when it got wet. Now look at what color it is and compare it to that one. I can't believe how well that Carhartt coat came out. I mean, that was Carhartt tan brown. Yeah, and the buttocks, even. I mean, it is all... I mean, they look brand spanking new now. That's what Rit Dye does, and it's about almost $3 a bottle. But you can re renew your clothes. I hadn't wore this shirt in a long time. But anyway, uh, I was just throwing that tip out for you if you'd never heard of Rit Dye and how it can rejuvenate everything you got to new. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Uh, and again, um, I appreciate you purchasing the gear and uh, I appreciate you watching my videos and I really appreciate all the nice comments. So you guys have a blessed weekend and a great next week.